Uh, Vera Power speaking in the press conference, I think yesterday. Um, we've got Ruth Fahey on the line to talk to us now about uh, what she expects to happen tonight. Ruth, good morning to you. How are you doing? I'm good, guys. Good morning. How are you? I'm um, sorry, I didn't realise, but uh, Ukraine were technically the second seeds heading into the uh, when the, where the draw was made for this group. But they've been hammered twice now by Germany. So um, have we got the best chance, really, at this point to finish in second, do you think? Yeah, you have to be honest about it and be realistic about it. And having bugged that in mind, absolutely. Like, Ukraine have just come off the back of two 8-0 hammerings to Germany. Um, so they're definitely at a weak point. It is strange, like Ukraine and Ireland are very, very similar. Um, like historically, they've only ever qualified for one major tournament, Finland, back in 2009. And apart from that, results wise are quite similar. But if you look back to the World Cup qualifying campaign, both Ireland and Ukraine finish on 13 points. Um, they, managed, they managed to scalp quite a big result against Denmark, beating Denmark, but then lost comprehensively then to Sweden twice and Denmark after that. We'll all remember that Ireland got that massive result to Netherlands away, got that draw, but of course lost twice to Norway and then and then again to Netherlands. So similar, what like in terms of quality wise and results wise, quite similar. It's I'm surprised Ukraine are slightly ahead there on rankings. They're ranked 25th in the world. Ireland have dropped slightly to 32. Um, but on paper, like looking at that, looking at this Irish side now compared to Ukraine side. Really, they've kind of got one star striker playing for Atletico Madrid. The rest are mostly domestically based players. Um, their their league is professional, but by no means is it like a huge strides ahead of the Irish league here. But looking at our girls and comparing us now to two years ago, like it's insane the amount of experience and accolades that they've gathered in those two years already. So, yeah, like going into this game, it's a home game. We've all been talking about the sellout. Um, hopefully it is a sellout. I know it's at the talk of season tickets actually claimed whether they'll be there is another question, but whether it looks okay, I'm looking out the window here. It's not wet and hopefully there will be packed fans and a big crowd as well. Tell us a bit more about the difference between the team two years ago, because just explain that, that like why the team should be yeah. much more confident. What, what, what have they achieved as, as individuals over the last two years? Well, that's exactly the point. And like, if you even break down the team one by one, I'm looking at the likes of Katie McCabe. Two years ago, Katie McCabe was going out on loan to Glasgow and wasn't quite happening for her at Arsenal. Since then, she's gone on to establish herself at Arsenal. She's a standout player in the WSL winning side. She's won the WSL last year. Same with Louise Quinn. She was just off the back of losing her club. Not County had disbanded two years ago. She'd just been picked up by Arsenal. Same as Katie, she's won the, she won the 2018 WSL. That's absolutely huge. And what that does to your confidence is outrageous. Like These are two players in top form in the top side in the UK. Like That is massive. Another one that likes Tyler Tolan. She had just broken in the start of the, of the 2009 qualifying campaign. We remember she became the youngest player after Emma Byrne when she started against the Dutch. She's now just gotten signed by Man City. Like Man City, she's just turned 18. She's played a couple of games already. That's absolutely huge for her confidence, her form. And I know at 18, but she's already a really, really important player for us. Um, Ni Fahi, she had just finished up at Chelsea two years ago. She's had a season abroad in Bordeaux. Now she's vice captain at Liverpool. She's entering like her, her absolute prime. Again, confidence is really high there. And again, looking up front, Leanne Kiernan, two, two years ago, she was still playing with Shelburne. She's now had a season under her belt at West Ham, the WSL. And again, she's a starter. She sets them for them every single game. Amber Barris and Claire Reardon have both gone abroad. They both play now professionally in Germany. Two years ago, Claire Reardon was a striker for Wexford Youth, as was Amber Barrett with Piment. Then we have got three WNL players, Rihanna Jarrett, Claire Walsh, and we also have Chloe Masaki. Rihanna Jarrett is in probably the best form of her entire life. She was just getting back into the international squad two years ago. She's now flying fish, probably on the brink of going professional next season, but a lot of people do expect it. There is talk about it. Um, but just to have that pick, because before it was kind of like Kiernan, do we go with Pace or Kiernan, do we go for Power Barrett? Now we've got those three, and something that we haven't really talked about too much is Julianne Russell. Johnny, you'll, you'll remember Julianne from the Galway days. Like yeah. She's playing, playing over in Sydney University at the moment, so she kind of, she went abroad, she emigrated for work reasons, and because of that reason, just assumed she was kind of bringing herself out of international selection, but... Eileen Gleeson would know Julianne extremely well. She played under her for years at Piment. And she's obviously given a nod to Vera that it's worth actually flying her back over to get her back in because we are a little bit light on the right wing. Um, Heather Payne may start there, but Russell is a standout winger. I've played her for years. She's John's she's so sister, isn't she? Well. Say again? John Russell's sister, isn't she? She is indeed, yeah. yeah. She's John's younger sister. Things um, are looking up for Galway. It's like uh, Aaron Connolly and all that. You know, just got a lot of talent in the... Uh, 
in the in the region at the moment. I, I did want to ask you about um, the comments that Vera made. Um, I am certain we will qualify for the playoffs now. Yeah. I'd be a little bit wary of stuff like that. She, like Ireland didn't play well, all, didn't play all that well against Montenegro. They were, you know, they were underwhelming. I think you could say. Um, it's bullish talk for you know a coach who's literally just in the door, and it could, to me, it could backfire. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised as well. Um, she said she gave herself a week, and after seeing the players for a week in training, that she is fully confident she is able to say that. Bullish talk, but like, is that a strategy from her? She wants to give her, her players confidence. All the talk around the squad and everything in the media reports at the moment is really positive about Vera. Um, there were question marks when she came in. She had a little bit of a, of a struggle, I suppose, of a stumble at Houston Dash. She was over there in the States for a season. They came sixth. They expected to come in the top four, and they didn't. Um, there's talk of her kind of management style can be quite strict and severe. But all the talk, I know obviously it's very, very early days, but she gave a little workshop as well to the, the Women's National League uh, club coaches over the last couple of days, and everyone speaks really positively about her already. Um, but do you blame her? She's come in, she's got a whole, she's got a squad of players, they're all playing professionally. I'm sure that training has gone well. Um, and she seems very confident. And after seeing Ukraine, like, <laughs> I know Germany are, are a whole level ahead, but two 8 0 hammerings back to back. I mean, if that were the Irish girls, that would be seriously bad news. I don't think, I don't think Vera Powell sees us at that level at all. And she'll know Ukraine, obviously, should have done her homework. So, it's confident talk. It is a bit bullish, but it's you know I think it probably is the right approach, and I I do expect Ireland to go out and win this evening. Yeah, Ruth, what difference does it make that it, it um, is expected? So it's there are no tickets available. Hopefully, everybody, as you said, uh, does yeah, use hopefully. them. What difference will it make to to have a game in a stadium which is full, where there's noise, where the atmosphere is exclusively for the Irish team? I mean, this is a quantum leap forward in terms of women's football in Ireland. Yeah, it is, exactly. And this is kind of the aftershock and the after effect that we hoped from the Women's World Cup. Um, it's absolutely huge. Like, guys, you know yourself, you've been at stadiums where it's a bit empty, a bit echoey, and then, tra- you know, re- reflect that upon those that are absolutely full. I was at the Montenegro game. wasn't great weather. Um, there was talk then of kind of, a, you know, a, a full crowd. It wasn't to be. I think it was just around a 3,000, just over that mark. And it's just not quite the same. Um, and then, of course, been down to Tala where it's full stacked there for League of Ireland games and it's just completely different than when you have a full packed Tala stadium and they're all baying for Ukrainian blood and supporting the Irish girls. That is huge because these are confidence players. Um, it's difficult when you're playing at a really high level, especially in women's team sport at the moment because you're always really aware, obviously, the pressure is on to win, especially in a game like this. But you also want to play well and you know that if you don't you do fairly get lambasted for it. So having a positive, supportive crowd um, there in Tala, and I know there's always like a lot of families and kids, and they're always really noisy, which is a really good thing. It actually does, honestly, have such a mental impact on the players, and it is really important. And like I said, like the weather is looking good for tonight, and hopefully it is a full pack stadium and, and get the 12th man on board. Okay, so you're predicting a win? Yeah, I'm predicting a win. I don't think, I think anything less. Um, a, a draw will do, but I think all things are pointing towards a win and three points. All right, Ruth, enjoy the game. Thanks a million for joining us this morning. Thanks, Wayne, guys. Thanks, yeah. Ruth.